Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. So I like, oh, I'm on now. Good evening, everyone. I think this is the first time ever we're like ready to start. So the people have been waiting ages for us to start. We're like, oh, we started a whole minute and a half early. <laughs> Obviously, you've heard about our reputation for um, good carol services and nativities. <coughs> So it came up on our Facebook memories today, and I do quote this story quite a lot, but it came up today by sheer coincidence. This time, 11 years ago, this is what I shared on Facebook. This is what you're letting yourself in for tonight. What an amazing carol service, like a scene from the Vicar of Dibley. Mary disappeared halfway through, because she needed a wee. Jesus was dropped headlong into the manger, <coughs> buried in the hay before being kidnapped by a small stage invader. I can't remember. A visitor brings a little Yorkie dog as they walk down their front. Oh, I've got to put my glasses on. <laughs> the tiniest print. Sorry. Oh my lord, Dave, how do you see through these? A visitor brings a little Yorkie dog that yaps ferociously as the children walk down to the front and then haphazardly through the rest of the service. The band had no idea what they were doing and seriously needed to work on their timing and we three kings, we had no cause to little donkey and managed to make it sound like we intended it to be a cappella all along. <laughs> and it was fabulous. Okay, so welcome, welcome to our carol service. Might not be quite as eventful as, uh, as that one. Was well, that was great fun. So, what I want us to do first of all, most of us like Christmas. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. So, I want you to tell me what you like about Christmas. What do you like? Somebody. Food. Now, there is specific food you eat at Christmas. You can eat food for 365 days a year. What food do you like at Christmas? Mince pies. I'm not even going to acknowledge the sprouts, but anything. Anybody else? What other food? What other food do we like at Christmas? Christmas pudding. Pigs in blankets. Sorry. Pigs in blankets. Shall I use this other microphone, Sam, or is it all right, this one? What's going on? Is it, oh, is it okay, okay. All right, I'll take away for it. Uh, what, other, what other food? Any more foods? What more foods do we like at Christmas? Got a pardon? Turkey. Didn't quite hear that. Turkey. What sound does the, what sound does the turkey make? It makes a sizzle as it comes out of the oven, doesn't it? Shh, 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 yeah. <laughs> stuffing. She likes a bit of stuffing with the turkey. Roast potatoes, jacket potatoes, anything else? What else? Apart from food, let's move on from food. Chocolate. Parsnips, Matthew. Christmas songs, thank you. Let's have some variation from food. We've got stuck with our mind and food. Christmas songs. What's your favourite Christmas song, Carl? Oh. Oh. Shall I come back to you in a minute? Yeah. I can't. Not, definitely not Bonium. 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 Mine's Little Drummer Boy. I like that one. Anything else, Christmas? I, I, I like the warmth of Christmas. I like the fact that it breaks up a miserable time of year, really, potentially. I like this nice break. I like the fact that people come together, we share together. It just feels a really nice time. I like the fact that people dress up. I drove past the, a man at a bus stop this morning, it was about half past seven, and he got a Father Christmas hat on, and I thought that was, I thought was really great. And it's something else I like, I like the idea of gifts at Christmas, and not for commercial reasons, but because it's an opportunity to think about someone, and what they'd like, and what would bless them, what they would enjoy, 
It might not be an actual physical gift, but it might be some time, something, you know, something to do, some to, a, a time that you arrange to do something together. Those are the best gifts. Time is such a precious gift. <clears throat> and then, of course, traditionally we think about Christmas, don't we? This is a time to celebrate the gift of Jesus, which is why we're here tonight. Now, hundreds of years before Jesus was born, it was prophesied in Isaiah that Jesus was going to be born. It was a prophecy. And this is what, the, what Isaiah said. It said, um, A virgin will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Do you know what Emmanuel means? It means God with us. Let's take a moment to think about what that means. It means God coming down to be with us. We're going to read the Christmas story throughout the service, um, but the important thing to know here is because, you know, we talk about the virgin birth and people think, oh, you know, how did that work? But the purpose of the virgin birth was to make Jesus human. So Jesus was human, and at the same time, he was God. So Jesus fully understands what it's like to experience being a man, the thoughts, the feelings that we have, and he gets it. He gets what it's like to be human. And as God, he's able to minister to us in our humanity. He's able to bless us and to encourage us. So the gift of Jesus is his presence, God with us, Emmanuel. Jesus walks with us daily. We're not alone on our journey, but we can rely on him to meet our needs. The gift of Jesus is his peace. He is the prince of peace. In a world that seems to have ever increasing, a, a want to induce anxiety and stress, every headline that you read is there to provoke a reaction. But Jesus says, I am the prince of peace. I am here to give you peace. And the gift of Jesus is eternal life because God wants a relationship with us so much that instead of waiting for us to climb up a mountain to try and find God, he sent Jesus down to earth to meet with us. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So this is what our carol service is about. It's to remember the gift of Jesus. Let's pray. We really thank you, God, for this time together. We really thank you, God, that with so many people in church, Lord, in, in your house. I thank you, Lord, for the warm invitation that you extend to us tonight to come into your presence and to experience you. Bless this time together in your precious name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to sing about three carols now. We're going to have a reading, then we're going to sing a carol. We've got a few little bits and bobs just to break up the evening, but we're going to start with some Christmas carols, okay? Ready to uh, oh, 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 sorry. That's my, that's my son on the sound desk. I think he's doing it on purpose. To... Right. Father wow, Christmas won't bring any presents in your isn't it? Lump of coal in your stocking. Okay, so feel free to stand up and we're going to praise God as we sing Christmas carols. So they're not just Christmas songs, these are God's songs too.
Okay, so we're just going to start with the first reading. We've got three readings, and this is the first one. We'll be back in a minute. <coughs> God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favoured woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. <coughs> Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him <coughs> Jesus. He will be very great <coughs> and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month, for the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. I'm going to sing another carol now. I'm going to sing Silent Night. <coughs>
invite Jess and Edie to have a look today to do the next reading. The children, uh, it's time for the children to get ready. So if the children want to just make their way out. So Jess is going to do a reading and then Ollie is going to do a reading straight afterwards. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. Edith. <laughs> His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophets. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. <coughs> At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He travelled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available to them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognise him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, laying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was invited by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a the baby, lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them.
Hello everybody and welcome to our nativity. It's called Jesus' Christmas Party. <coughs> there was nothing the innkeeper liked more than a good night's sleep. But that night, there was a knock at the door. No, no room, said the innkeeper. But we're tired and have travelled <coughs> through night and day. There's only a stable round the back. <coughs> So they signed it, Mary and Joseph. Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed and went to sleep. But then later, there was another knock at the door. <coughs> Excuse me, um, I wonder if you could lend us another smaller blanket? Here's a small blanket, said the innkeeper. Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed, and went to sleep. A bright light woke him up. <coughs> said the innkeeper. Then he shut the door, Hello. climbed the stairs, <laughs> drew the curtains, got into bed, and went to sleep. There was another knock at the door. We are the shepherds. Have you lost your sheep or something? Yeah. <laughs> Round the back, said the innkeeper. Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, 
got into bed and went to sleep. But then, there was yet another knock at the door. We are the three kings. From the back. <laughs> he slammed the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed and went to sleep. But then, a chorus of singing woke him up. <coughs> so he got out of bed, stomped down the stairs, threw open the door, went round the back, stormed into the stable, and was just about to speak when... said the innkeeper. Yes, a baby has this night been born, oh. said the innkeeper, looking crossly into the manger. And just at that moment, suddenly, amazingly, his anger seemed to fly away. <laughs> <laughs> said the innkeeper. <laughs> In fact, he thought he was so special, he woke up all the guests at the inn so that they could come and have a look at the baby too. the children in singing away in a manger we'll put the words up on the screen <coughs> for everybody we've got our little candles we've got some little candles for them
That was fantastic. Thank you so much. And they were so well behaved as well. Hetty singing is just awesome. She's going to be a fantastic singer when she gets to school. She's a fantastic singer now. I just love the way she got a bit distracted part way through with the candle. That was quite funny. <coughs> it's really, really good. Thank you. And thanks, uh, John and Claire, for and all the joy. All, everybody that's put the hard work in there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So Bob's got to follow this now. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to ask Bob to come and share a few word of words with us now. Thanks, Bob. Thank you for that. Brilliant, that, wasn't it? Do you know, I, I love the the atmosphere that it creates when you do things like this. It's just a, a beautiful <coughs> warmth in the atmosphere, isn't it? When, the, when they, they do the, the nativity like that, and I just, I just love it, I love it. You know, having spoke for over 40 years <coughs> about the Christmas story, I've been sp speaking about it here for what, over 30 years and then many years before that, and it's, in, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, the Christmas story is only in Matthew and Luke. You think it's in all the Gospels, but it's actually only in Matthew. And look, and all the, all the information that we get regarding the birth of Jesus is taken from those two books. And so when you read them uh, and you go through them and you, and you look for something that you may have not spotted before, because, you know, after speaking about it, it's only time you think, right, what should I, what new aspect should I put on, on it? But you know, there's one thing that I always have to start by saying, and that is how much I love Christmas. We live in a changing world where some people don't want to say Christmas, they don't want to say this, they don't want to say, but you know, I absolutely love Christmas. And when Ruth started off by saying, what do you like about Christmas? And it's like, yeah, you know, I didn't say anything. I was keeping quiet, but you know, the mince pies and the, and the, but you know, I would say most of all, what I love is the atmosphere that it creates. You know, something interesting about Christmas is it is celebrated around the world. It's celebrated in more than 160 countries around. I, I just checked, there are a few countries that don't celebrate it, but it's an interesting thing that over 100% of the world celebrate Christmas in one way or another. You know, we've had the privilege of celebrating it in another country where they celebrated it very differently, but the meaning was still there and the celebration was still there and the joy that comes from it was still there. <clears throat> Apparently, in the UK, 88%, and I, I, I like this, the way they put this, 88% of UK consumers celebrated Christmas in 2021. I, I love the Christmas and sometimes people try to take a little bit out of it and they don't want to put the the the, 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 the God thing into it or the, the Christ or the church or the Jesus they like to leave that bit out uh, or sometimes they're a little bit embarrassed to say oh it's about Jesus and they kind of I, I, I love driving that round and most years we drive to Bamford. Has anyone ever been to Bamford and seen the nativity at, at Bamford? It is, it's just so worth driving to and, and people put that up there to celebrate this special Christmas time. But times people want to take away from Christmas the truth. I was talking to a lady this week uh, and I said, it, you know, Christmas said it's like you celebrating your birthday but you're not invited kind of thing. That's how some people want to try and push it out. But for me, I think it's a very, very special time. And none of that detracts from it from me. I still love it. I still celebrate it. I still enjoy it. I rejoice. And of course, it's all because of the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. How God, and, and you know, we, we just watched that nativity there. Uh, and I, I think they did great, didn't they? I think they did great. I'm not sure whether Ollie was the star of that, but... Uh, <laughs> Well done, well done. 
You know, when you think about it, how God chose to send his son into this world is amazing. How he chose to do it is amazing. But you know what? On the other hand, it defies our logical thinking. If it was, if it was left to me to, to bring something like that, I wouldn't have done it in that way. But, you know, we believe that this happened exactly as it is recorded. And it does de defy our logical thinking. I, I, was, I was talking with uh, Jill just before the, the service tonight. And uh, we was talking, well, sadly, a man who is known to quite a few of us, John Halton, uh, passed away this last week. And, in his, and we know that he's rejoicing with the Lord. And I always like to think... You know, that when someone's life is, is over and they, they knew the Lord, that they'll be rejoicing. And I always like to think he now knows the truth of his faith. We're still living by faith. And this story that we have heard today is we believe it by faith. It's through faith that we believe that Jesus came into this world. Not, not trying to put a logical understanding on it because that would never work. But we, we've, we concluded in our conversation that we are, was it 99.99% did we say? 99.9% .9 sure in our faith that this is how it all is. And that 0.01% could be an attempt of the, the devil. We'll leave him out of it for today to, to try and put some doubts in, into our hearts. But you know it is through faith that we believe this is the truth of what happened you could try and unpick it. You could, you could analyse it, you could rationalise it. I've even heard that people who are potential believers or so-called believers have cast out on the virgin birth and that doesn't make sense to me, you know, that a virgin birth and they cast out on that. Some people even ridicule the whole story as being quite absurd. Well, you might be shocked at this, but I think it is. I think it is. But that's what makes it so credible. That what make, that's what makes it so credible. Because if God was to have done it how we thought it should have been done, it wouldn't have been right. It wouldn't have worked. Because it's not something that we could work out or plan with our human understanding. I mean, if you go to the reason why God sent Jesus into the world... And you start to look at that and you, and you reflect back a little bit. You think, well, why on earth would God want to send his son into this world to bother with people who continually turn their backs on him, who just don't want anything to do with him? Why would he do, the, do that? Well, here's the reason. Because he loves us. Because he loves each one of us who have been created in his image. He loves with an immeasurable love. Have you heard of agape love? It's very hard to put into words agape love, but I've put a few meanings to it. It's a sacrificial love. It's a healing love. It's a uniting love. It's a saving love. It's a restoring love. And because God has a love for his people whom he created, and he saw the problem, we have got time to go into all of the problems, but I think we would accept today that we need a saviour. And this is how God chose to send Jesus. So really, it's a story of love. It's a story of love that sent Jesus into this world, and this is what it's done. It's brought hope. It's brought light. <coughs> it's brought peace into millions and millions of people's hearts and lives. Yes, I know it's been misconstrued, misrepresented, misunderstood. And many people through that, through that has brought pain and suffering into the world. And I understand that some people are maybe upset and angry about Christianity throughout history. But I can only say this, is that they have, to use a colloquial word, they've got the wrong end of the stick. Because the message of Jesus is just one of pure love. One of pure love. And however people may look at it, the truth of this story of Jesus coming into the world, it remains. The true meaning, 
the true purpose, the true reason. It still remains today and it will continue in that truth until Jesus comes a second time. And he came to establish, and I don't want to get too deep into this, but just one second. He, that truth is this, that he came to establish a new covenant with the people of this world. There was an old one, let's ask Viv about that, I can explain it. But a new one. Jesus came to establish a new covenant whereby you and I today could be reunited with God in heaven through Jesus coming into this world. That was the purpose. And it was brought to us through his love. Jesus was born in Bethlehem about, I checked this, about 2,026 years ago with some remarkable things that announced his arrival. And I think it's good that, that Ollie read the same verse. I'm just going to read something very quickly from Luke, which is what Ollie read from. And this is something that is, and I, this is that thing that I looked at. I thought, this is something new that I can see in the story of the nativity and here's one of them and some of the explanations that what happens in our hearts when we read them have you has anybody ever read that story after jesus was crucified uh, and then he, he rose from the dead and there was two men walking along a road and jesus came and walked along with them and discussed it and at the end of it he disappeared and then later they, those two men said didn't our hearts burn within us when we were listening to what Jesus said. That's the similar experience that I have when I read this part of this story. He said that, and, and you'll forgive me for reading it again, I know Ollie's read it, but it's something that really lights up in my heart when I read it. It says that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flock of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and this is the part that really, raw. Oh, I just felt so good in my heart. It said, and the radiance of the Lord's glory <coughs> surrounded them. And I tried to picture that in my mind, that those shepherds there, and they were, they were just quietly, I don't know, getting on with their night. And these, this angel appeared, and the part that really blesses me in my heart when I read this, it said that that, that glory surrounded them. And when I read it, it kind of just lights up in my heart because I know that this is, this is the truth of what happened. And that, that glory surrounded them. Do you know, sometimes, I'll be absolutely honest, I feel like the glory of that same godly presence surrounds me. Just through, because I believe it. Because it's through faith that I believe it. He said they were terrified, and that's the usual thing, because what happens, and, and I don't know if you'll fully understand this, but when something from heaven interacts with earth, the usual response is that people are afraid. You read through the Bible and you see every time that something from heaven came down and, and kind of interrupted the, the, the world and this, the life in this world, that people like Moses when he saw that burning bush and it was something from heaven that was coming down and it kind of, well, it, 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 it scared him. Or when the disciples were on that mountain. When something from heaven interacts here on earth, all our natural understanding goes out of the window. Don't try and rationalize or bring it down to our human level of understanding what happens when something from heaven comes down here. And that's basically what's happening to those, <coughs> those shepherds that night. The angel said, don't be afraid. And again, this is the part that, again, just <coughs> brings that warmth of a glow in my heart. Because he said, I'll bring you good news. I'm bringing you good news. I like good news. I think there's a little bit too much of bad news sometimes. But isn't it good when you get good news? Good news. He said, I bring you good news. And it gets better. It says, this good news will bring great joy to all people. To all people. What a massive thing to say. The Saviour, yes, yes. And I put a great big yes here because it says, yes, the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. 
Suddenly the angel of the Lord was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth, and goodwill towards everybody. Amazing. Beautiful. Awesome. Just try and absorb what was being said to those shepherds there that night. As they, as they were, uh, they, they had a special, I don't know, I'd love to have been one of those shepherds that, that night. I'd love to have been because, you know, the, in the day the shepherds were kind of the, of the lowest end of society. You know, and God chose those, those shepherds there. And, and you've seen it, they went and they found ex everything exactly that had been told to them by the angel. And you'll find him, you know, the old King James wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. What a humble beginning. What a humble start to life. And yet here was the saviour of the world who will bring joy to all people. Who would have believed? I can't imagine that those shepherds would have ever believed in their wildest imagination that 2020, 2026 years later, we'd still be talking about them. We'd still be remembering what happened to them. We'll still be going through the accounts of what happened to them. And as they found that baby, exactly as was told to them. And we can say yes. And do you know what else? That that joy that was promised to you, that would, the, the Saviour would bring, is still bringing joy to people. I can stand here today and say that that has reached into my life and I'm sure there's many people here who would say yes, amen, that's me too. It's reached into my life and brought me immeasurable joy. It's brought me back in that new covenant, we'll look at that another time, to know God in my heart and in my life, to bring me hope, to bring me peace, to bring God's blessing. Hallelujah. Let me ask you today, do you know him? Do you know this Jesus whom we're celebrating the birth of? This Jesus who came in the most humblest of humblest of ways. How could it be that the King of Kings would be born in this humble way? Even to the place where they went and there was no room at the normal place but you have to go into the back to the stable. He came to bring a message of the love of God. This Jesus came with the most important message that this world has ever received. That good news, that joy to all people. And it was that you may know him. Do you know on this, this message will carry on until Jesus comes again. But you know, let me, let me tell you this in finishing, that he can bring you that peace. That peace that is special. Peace in your heart is worth more than a million pounds in the bank. That joy is something that cannot be found in material things. But he gives you that joy. And he is the light. Jesus said, I am the light. And he shone his light into our hearts. And do you know the way the Bible <coughs> explains it? Is that when you hear this story... And the truth of it becomes real in your heart. He shines his light into your heart. And allows you to see all of these great and beautiful things that he's made available for you and for I. Why? Through the birth of Jesus. That's what he came to do. To change our lives. To bring us that joy and that peace. Amen. Thanks for sharing that word, Bob. We're going to sing a song now called Make Room. And uh, it's a real challenging song. And, you know, it, it really fits in well. Obviously, it's, it's a Christmas song. But we've had the innkeeper who had to make room. We have, you know, what, what Bob's just said. Do, is there room in your heart for the <coughs> message of God? So let's just <coughs> listen to this song.
bit about Home Now until the end. We're going to sing almost the last song because after we finish, we do wish you a Merry Christmas. But we're going to sing this song. It's called For All That You Have Done. You can <coughs> stand together and join in with us. You'll need the words, but you'll know the tune. Is that okay? It's the tune of Old Lang Syne and it's called For All That You Have Done. <coughs> So before we wish you all Merry Christmas, I want to say thank you all for coming. Um, if you're a visitor here tonight, you're so welcome and we want to say thank you. Our next service is Christmas Day, it's 11 o'clock and you're more than welcome to come to that too. We'd love to see you there. If you want to speak to anybody about what you've heard tonight, then you could be seeing us all here. You know, please uh, come and have a chat with us, you're more than welcome to just explain a little bit more if you've got some questions, there's no pressure, um, but if you've just got some questions and you want to to ask a little bit more, please come and, and ask us, that would be, be, we'd welcome you with open arms. So 
Well, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We're going to give some presents out to Sean. Of course, I remembered. And the grown ups. And the grown ups. We wish you a Merry Christmas and get a gift. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, bring us some figgy pudding. Oh, bring us some figgy pudding. Oh, bring us some figgy pudding. Good tidings we bring to you and your king. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. We won't go until we get some. So bring some right here. Good tidings we bring to you and your king. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you everyone. Hope you've enjoyed it.